Um, well, this is a special uh, presentation tonight because we've split it into four uh, short presentations. Uh, three of them from people who have either not given a presentation uh, to us before uh, or haven't done them very much. So we're going to start with Ralph at the queue. Uh, and, and some of these are going to be real different presentations from what you normally hear. All right, so enjoy the ride. Uh, Ralph was uh, not all the way up and trained as a naturalist. Uh, and he's been an amateur astronomer since he was a kid. Uh, uh, enjoyed watching the Gemini and Apollo launches on television. Uh, and uh, got into freelance photography, uh, selling his work to photo agencies, uh, magazines, art shows. Uh, now he enjoys astrophotography. Um, and uh, he got into collecting uh, buttons. Um, so, his presentation tonight is Antique Astronomy Buttons. <laughs> You're on. The thing is too weird, this guy did it with coins. You're probably familiar with Robert Burnham, he was an eclectic, strange guy. Had a lot of interest, and if you're familiar with the trio of books here, uh, you probably ignored those parts of it because uh, it had nothing to do with astronomy and gave stories on mythology, basically. But what he did with coins, I found out I could do with buttons. These are real buttons, they're not um, anything special. It was like a pin or for commemorative reasons. They're actual buttons that were worn on people's clothes in the 19th century. Um, hmm. 19th century was a time of real resurgence of interest in uh, the natural world in general, and astronomy was a part of it. And my, my collection is uh, narrow to just this. I've, I've been in buttons for 12 years as a chauffeur gopher, we say, because my wife was, is the big collector. She has an immense collection of children's literature and myths and fables. I started picking up things accidentally. I'm not an expert on it, but I know a lot of people who are. Um, it's, it's an interesting world, I guarantee you didn't know what was out there. Um, I know hundreds of people across the country now that look for stuff for me. Actually, Ralph, could you stand more towards the center? Oh, okay. I don't want to cut anybody off. Push the button, don't look into it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> the five the point, yeah, it. Why not push the clip and go down? There you go. I don't need you. Give me the next slide. So these are my arbitrary groups that I collect in. Uh, I started with just simple stars. And there's literally a, an antique star button for every star in our galaxy. So I didn't bring any of those tonight, uh, really. Uh, I kind of enjoy mythological and uh, lunar designs the most. And you'll see uh, a few of those here. Uh, I probably could subdivide comets and, and the sun now. They become bigger parts of my collection. <clears throat> this is uh, the first one I'll show you. It's one a figure you should be familiar with, the Muse of Astronomy, Urania. Uh, if you've got the Gary Ross's Bible here, <laughs> you, probably, you see that insignia on in the front. And also in the U.S. Naval Observatory seal, uh, she appears. This is her on a 19th century button, uh, a little worn. But, uh, metric sizes are correct, by the way. The other one's just going to be my rough estimate when I looked at it. Anyway, I started, this was probably one of my first or second buttons I came across and gave me ideas of the collection. Where did you find that? I'll show you at the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is cool. This had a couple of different names. The early name, you're talking 1865, 1885 for this button. Uh, the new name is Apollo and the Sun Chariot. Early on it was called Phaeton, which is Apollo's son. Uh, I don't know why it changed, but the story is the same, and uh, it's the same design for the button. <coughs> okay. Ralph, who would be wearing these things? Uh, well, all of these, mostly uh, after 1830, uh, 
buttons became less prevalent for men. They were up until 1830. They were worn only by men. Women had a different way of latching things. Yeah. Uh, there was a turnaround, and as they got larger and more flamboyant, women took them over, basically. And men kind of their clothes became more sedate and conservative, and the, the loud buttons faded away. Okay, this is Diana. Um, two of the rare uh, female designs. In fact, she's the only one I have in a crescent moon. Uh, <coughs> see, brass was probably the most common material they used. How do you know that that's time. Diana? It, it's identified in my buttons uh, field guide, uh, Buttons <laughs> of the World. <laughs> it says Diana, so I'm believing them. I also know she's a, a Roman goddess, and they got her portrayed in. Greek style clothing and hair style, so that's a little different, but she's the goddess of the moon, fertility, wild animals, I looked it up one time, it was just about anything that's out there, uh, she was the goddess of, but she's in this design also. I started collecting anything that had to do with astronomy, not just, um, I'll show you another button, if it has any kind of astronomical figure in it, I uh, collect it. Okay. <coughs> Mm. Neptune, it's pretty neat to see. These are all pretty straightforward right now. Uh, buttons pretty accurately uh, reflect all of human history. I didn't know it at the time. Literally every incident that's occurred, every war, popular trend, everything you can imagine under the sun is on a button. Mm. I know people who collect uh, unicorns, beetles, gorgeous spider buttons, dragonflies. And they cover all eras, not just from antique, but through modern times also. And, uh, they were attached to clothing? These are all clothing buttons. What was the back like? It's a shank. On all of these, it's a little metal shank. You just push uh, it through? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's a sew-on. You have to oh, sew it. okay. Uh, very seldom. I, I don't think I have any here tonight are, are the holes like you have on your shirts today. Sew-throughs. Uh, they all have a little metal shank. This is an astrological crossover. Uh, it's called Sol and Luna, so I knew it had to do with astronomy, plus I had the stars in the middle. Uh, so I bought it when I found it. Uh, astrology isn't, uh, most of them tend to be uh, zodiacal symbols, uh, but there's a lot of beautiful sets made out of ivory, carved, I mean, they're gorgeous and expensive, but uh, I don't get into that too much, but I'll buy it if it's cheap enough. <laughs> Go ahead. These are just going to be a few photographs from books. It'll show you some mythology characters that I, I'd like to get. I won't get this one. There's only eight, eight of us known in the world. Um, it's very old, uh, from the mid 1700s. Uh, under glass. Uh, it's from a set of eight, I believe, also. Uh, but I'll, I wanted you to see the figure of Perseus up there. You can see his winged feet pretty easily. There. <coughs> Pegasus, pretty straightforward there too. Mm. It's a dirty button, I know. Okay. You can just say next. Okay. Next. <coughs> Show you a couple of Mercury uh, designs here. This is the more unusual one, face on like that. The next. <coughs> this has similarities to our uh, our Mercury head dime. Mm -hmm. That was the design here. I'll get these sooner or later here. Okay. How large were these the diamonds? Um, these here came out of the book, and I did a picture from a book, and I didn't have a size on them. So most of them will be about an inch to an inch and a quarter, uh, as a rule. <laughs> they were large. 19th century buttons were much larger than we're used to now. Okay. Mars. <coughs> There's another design of Ganymede also uh, that I like. Okay, <laughs> this is, uh, this is, I like this set here. Then. This is one of my real ones now, no longer a photo. Scaramouche, uh, 19th century French pantomime figure. It was kind of like the, the cats or hare or whatever of its day. Big Broadway type of deal in Europe. Uh, Scaramouche was uh, a Punch and Judy figure. 
I think he was on the, the wrong end of most of the punches uh, activity. <laughs> but um, buttons reflected popular trends and current events. This is a current event button in my collection. It's a current event for the late 19th century. And this figure appears in many styles. I guess this is their favorite scene from that whole play. Uh, it is the crescent moon, and somehow he's wooing his lover in the middle of the night. Uh, and that's, he always appears with a with crescent moon of some kind. Yeah. There's two more. They spent a lot of time on these in the 19th century. Uh, they weren't the trivial things we think of today. Uh, this is my favorite out of all of them right here. Uh, this design with the, the border. Uh, you'll see in another button, I think it's probably manufactured by the same company. I don't, I don't know for sure, or they just stole the, the border because they liked it. But uh, he's singing to the crescent there. Okay, these are two. I actually don't have these two. These are for a friend from a friend of mine. I'm going to get this one shortly. Were these all produced in this country, Ralph? Um, Europe, Europe? Uh, and in colonial America did a lot of buttons too. Yeah. These are after that, but uh, a lot of them from France, Germany, <coughs> Italy. Uh, they were big on that. Okay, this is the one that I'm telling you. This is actually a re really nice button. It's kind of rare because I got it with um, tint. And normally you see it as all worn off. Very, very few exist with, with any of the original coloring. You wouldn't even know uh, that it had been tinted. Hmm. Uh, it's not really astronomical, as you can see. It's, uh, it's a common everyday scene. Uh, the Orient influenced Europeans tremendously at one time. They were interested in everything that was going on over there. And uh, it's a European button. Uh, they call it the Oriental Wedding. When I have a <coughs> title up here, that's the official title in the Big Book of Buttons. That's what it's called. Uh, it's a two-volume set. I know I bought it for my wife. It's four hundred and fifty dollars right now for a two-volume set. I bought it for two fifty because I gave him twenty bucks as a down payment five years before it came out. So when it, by the time it, it came out, it had gone up quite a bit in value. So anyway, you can see it's large. It was forty-two million. Years. This is that design I was showing you earlier. It's still like, like a heart, fleur de lis or something there. Uh, Carved. Pewter, they call them bright cuts when they uh, etch it in like that. But rising sun, another big button. Okay, these are. This is a whole new world here now. This is black glass, and all these buttons came out after 1861 in response to Queen Victoria going into a lengthy period of mourning the rest of her life. For 20 years, she never appeared in public in anything but black because Prince Albert died. He was her husband. He died early age. I think they're both around 40, 41. Uh, and because of his death and her wearing black, all the public wanted to look just like her because they loved their royalty back then. And uh, they couldn't afford the jet buttons that she wore, jets of uh, lignite type of material. It's like cold, it's, uh, highly compressed wood. Uh, it cost a lot of money to make jet. To get it and make it, only the queen had it or royalty. So they made it out of glass. And this is a real tiny one. Uh, these are, like I said, you may not want, every time you button your shirt, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to not be happy anymore after you see what they used to wear. <laughs> this is a comet with stars, straightforward, uh, black glass, 1865. <clears throat> okay, these aren't mine. A uh, friend uh, in Wisconsin sent me the photos. I've seen him once. He won't part with him. He's a major dealer in the country. Uh, I think they might be the only known existence uh, of these two buttons. And I don't know why they're called waxing and waning, but he told me uh, he's a former curator of an Arizona museum. Uh, he said they're waxing and waning moon faces, so I'll take his word for it. Okay, more crescent moons. Interesting names. Why? We're we are at. Uh, we okay, are we'll speed up over time. Okay. Yeah, let's go through these. Take a look at them. Better just keep going. Yeah. 
Maybe one you want me to stop it. Yeah, you... this one here you can. This is a little after. This is an uh, American event that happened in 1912, a political event. I was trying to challenge Ken to figure it out. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt? Yeah, it's Teddy Roosevelt, but it, it's, it's, it's his failed bid for a third nomination yep. for the presidency. So it's called Teddy Gazing at the Moon. You see his big <laughs> stick? He's kind of using a yep. handheld refractor to reflect, I guess, kind of an astronomer <laughs> joke there. <laughs> oh, that's that's These are, are fantastic, but they're not really of Halley's Comet. Uh, they came out in between the sightings. This is a modern name for it. It's probably Comet Donato. Uh, timing isn't right for this design to be called Halley's. Two more. There's minor changes to all these, you can see. Anybody selling anything like this today? Oh, yeah. I got them all in the last two years. Like, yeah. Well, this is modern, Why can't we have these thing. on our clothes? You, well, you can. I got some great Einstein buttons and Neil Armstrong buttons. Celluloid. Celluloid, early plastic, unfortunately, was flammable. Uh, <laughs> so the first thing you want to do, next slide. <laughs> it's a great button. I got all three of these. Uh, keep going. You put it on a little kid's shirt right away. <laughs> this is a rare picture from 1910. These are women's perfume buttons here, the crescents. Uh, they, women actually soaked perfume in them and wore a ton of them up and down so they'd smell nice all night long, probably for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Men's waistcoat buttons. Uh, you can get stars of all incredible designs on these. I, I own eight of these. All six of these are mine, but I have two others that I didn't have them for. I have to fight with owl collectors for these buttons. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Ralph, you got one minute. Okay, let's go through. We're, we're only we're, there's minutes. only a few left. Yeah. Owls is near the end. And 14 millimeters, real tight. You can probably just about wear them on our shirts here. There's another one. <clears throat> Stars. Caravelle oh, wow. is a Portuguese sailing vessel. It has a crescent, flight of doves, <laughs> and a sun with a balloon. This is the last button I got. Um, this is in a, in a dish. It's kind of concave. It's missing a, a steel star that goes up there. Uh, I'll get it sometime. You're asking me about where I get these? This is a corner of a room uh, in an Amway in Grand Rapids about four years ago. Uh, the dealers are setting up in the morning before they let the public in. Uh, this is just one corner. The room is immense. <coughs> But they sell. You can look and find anything there. The people compete in different categories, competitions, displays. Uh, it's an unusual group of people, <laughs> to say the least, but they attend all the uh, antique shows and everything else and pick up stuff for us. Okay? All right.